Good afternoon and welcome again to Paul T's World. So in this episode I thought I would go and get some mange too, some potatoes and maybe some gooseberries. So come and join me and we'll see what we can find. This is the vegetable area where there are about uh, one, two, three, four, five raised beds. And in the first one there are raspberries. Now these raspberries at the front here are actually autumn flowering raspberries. And the ones at the back, these are all summer flowering raspberries. Now you might think they look a little bit strange. That is because last year instead of only cutting down the canes that had flowered and produced raspberries, I took them all down. So these have all grown this year and it'll be interesting to see if they produce any raspberries. In actual fact, what have we got? We've got a few little flowers forming there. The reason I cut them all back, including last year's new canes that should be flowering this year, was because I was going to change them all. After three or four years, really they want changing and I was going to do that, but I didn't get round to it. So it's going to be interesting to see if these summer flowering raspberries know they're summer flowering raspberries and get a move on. What I like about the autumn flowering ones is you don't need to stake them. They won't grow much higher than say that. Having said that, I will put a couple of stakes either end and a little piece of string. A little bit concerning is the fact that they're going a bit yellow here. I wonder if I haven't fed them enough. But in fact, I did give them a good mulch and some manure early on in the year. Never had that before, but we'll find out what that is. The reason I have lined this with some spare stones from when the path was built was because the blackbirds come and throw out all the compost. It's a good job those blackbirds are good singers. So I forgive them everything. These are the first early's potatoes and they're ready to be harvested, or at least some are. This one looks as though it can go another week or two. The ones at the back look as though they're ready. And as you can see, there's gaps there where I've already taken out some potatoes. So they were put in in March and then banked up as they grew. Once the leaves start looking as though they're over, like these, then maybe it's time to start taking the potatoes out. And these are leeks they've just been put in. What I like about leeks is the fact that you can leave them in the ground until you're ready for them, so you can just pull them up individually as you wish. Also, they don't seem to have any pests, easy to grow, no problem. Except the wood pigeon walks up and down here and with his big feet he can easily uh, knock them down at this stage. Oh, is that a little weed there? Let's just pull that out. As you can see, these raised beds are past their best. I did them with my brother, um, oh, I would say 10, 12 years ago. And probably this is the last year that they are going to survive. But I think they'll just about do for this year. So the beds, they're about six feet long and four feet wide. The reason I put them four feet wide is because you can lean over two feet and lean over two feet the other way. So you can work on the whole of the raised bed without standing on it in any way. If you have a raised bed too long, you'd be tempted to walk over it. So maybe six feet is about as long as you want for a raised bed. Now, what have we got here? We've got some mange too at the back. and some dwarf French beans. Oh, and there's a little ladybird. Can you make out the little ladybird on the piece of string? Oh, I love seeing the ladybirds. 
So here we've got the dwarf French beans. I like these because again they don't need staking. The reason I've got the string here is because the wood pigeon, when he's finished eating the lovely sunflower hearts that I spend a fortune on, he then comes here for a salad. But he doesn't like getting his feet and head trapped here, so that kind of keeps him at bay a little bit. The courgettes. Always good to have at least two courgettes so they can pollinate each other. This is interesting. Every year we get this mildew on the courgettes. Doesn't seem to do it any harm, but I don't like the look of it, but there we are. Oh, and this one over here is a yellow one. Let's just have a look at the yellow one. There we are, little yellow one. I like courgettes because, again, they're easy to grow, no pests. Probably two or three is sufficient. Five here is going to be too much. Oh, I think the children are coming home from school. These three here, I don't know how big they're going to grow, but that probably isn't enough room. And what courgettes want, or zucchini, as our friends over the pond call them, is a lot of water and a lot of goodness. To demonstrate how much goodness they want, traditionally in Britain you'd grow these in a compost heap. Some of these leaves that have got a lot of mildew, I'll probably just take those off. Oh, there's some rhubarb here. You can see how much rain we've had recently because the rhubarb is always flat at this time of the year. By July, probably best not to pick them anymore. Here's a little foxglove that I was talking about in the other video, so I can just dig that up and pop it with the other foxgloves and that'll flower next year. This is fennel. Yeah, I've sort of got the root. Now, I had some fennel and I let it flower. Big mistake. Fennel, my goodness. It was about four or five years ago that I got rid of the fennel and there's still seedlings coming up. How? I don't know. And then here we've got the gooseberries. The previous owners planted the gooseberry and they're really good. They're not actually as big as they used to be. Uh, this one uh, does produce the seedlings and that's where I got that one from. I just replanted a seedling. Now I presume it was the previous owner who put the lemon balm in. It smells. It smells absolutely gorgeous, that lemon balm. And I think they put it here to protect the gooseberry from the gooseberry sawfly. Now, I never have a problem with gooseberry sawfly. Let's just see. So to tell if a gooseberry is ready is give it a little squeeze and if it's not bullet hard and is a little bit soft, it's ready to pick. A few years ago, I decided I wanted some blackberries. So this is a thornless blackberry. And I had a large superstructure here with the blackberries across it, and it all fell down in the winter about four years later. So I was going to take it out, but it started, I cut it back, I was going to take it out, and now it started growing again. And, I think I'll just leave it for this year. At least the birds would like some of those blackberries. Didn't quite produce as I was hoping. Maybe because I haven't fed it enough.
because the soil is sandy and even though I've given it goodness um, yeah perhaps it doesn't get as much as it needs so this lemon balm the other thing about lemon balm is it's very very invasive in fact there's one just here growing out of the stones I've got here so I don't know I manage it because in the winter I dig it all up as much as I can and then this is what happens but if it's doing its job then that's good enough for me now here are some cabbages and I'll just show you what happened to the cabbages when they weren't covered pigeon walked along and took them all well took the leaves so the stalks were there so the, the leaves regrew on the stalks and then the pigeon came along again so decided to cover it this time but I'm not a fan of cabbages because if the pigeons don't get it the cabbage white butterflies will and it's very difficult to keep them off even with netting and all sorts so I prefer things like courgettes mange too peas beans haven't got any runner beans this year but traditionally in Britain we grow runner beans up canes looks lovely the bees love it and the produce is great you get lots of it oh and the best of all are the leeks because they're no trouble at all grown from seed and they will be ready oh when will they be ready end of the summer autumn through the winter so most of those will stay through the winter and then just pick them individually as you like potatoes are a lot of fun a little bit of work mounding them up as they grow through the soil got to keep them uh, watered raspberries easy but you do really have to stake them properly with a superstructure that fell down this one <laughs> I'm not much of a carpenter the one problem with raspberries is the blackbirds their second favorite after blueberries are the raspberries the blackbirds get about 50 percent so I get the other 50 percent and they sing for their supper So that's a little rundown of the vegetable patch at the side of the house in some raised beds. Really easy to do and it doesn't matter what soil you have in the garden. Once you have a raised bed you can put good soil in. It doesn't have to be that deep depending on what kind of vegetable you want to grow. So come on let's grow some vegetables. If you found this interesting as per usual give it a like, subscribe, hit the notification button, you know the routine, you've seen lots of YouTube videos. And then I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.